back to Live High Podcast. I am your host, Tammy Jones, and today I have with me Mr. Russell Thompson. How you doing today, Mr. Russell? I'm doing wonderful. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Good, Thank good, you for good. inviting me. Yeah, all the time. So um, I always ha- like to start my show off by asking my guests, where are they from and who is Mr. Russell? Well, uh, I'm Russell Thompson. I'm from originally from California. Oh, uh, but uh, my father is a preacher. My mother was a teacher, so we moved to Dallas, Texas. I think in 1998. 98. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I've been here for a while. Okay. Um, and so um, went to business school. Um, got a business. I got an MBA from okay. University of Phoenix. Okay. Uh, have a license in life insurance across the country. I got probably about 20 different states. I'm licensed in. Wow. Um, and I help people build generational wealth. Okay, okay. So why Dallas, Texas? <laughs> well, I guess I just stayed here. I, I love it. Uh, it's kind of laid back. Okay. Um, not like L.A., everything kind of moving fast. Oh, yeah. A um, lot of space out here. Okay. So, you know, you can get you nice. Yeah. Some nice. California high. <laughs> that was the last thing I was about to say. Right? It's very high out there because your living. Ma- your mom is so your dad was a, a preacher and mm-hmm. your mom was a teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, so they decide to come here this, for the same reason you're saying, or just well, he he got, he got a call out here to pastor a church out here in okay. Dallas. So okay. they took it after us. You know, you got three knucklehead boys in Compton, California. What? You know, <laughs> mom was like, I think she started packing before he even accepted no the call. Way. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, like I gotta get these boys up out of here. Right. <laughs> so it was going down in Compton. That was the time, you know, NWA was starting up. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw all of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. That's crazy. I thought you'd been here. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. So y'all moved down here. You started your your business career down here. So what initially did you start doing when y'all first got here? So um, there was a magnet school called Townview. That's where I graduated from. Uh huh. Ninety six. Right. Yeah. And ninety six is where I graduated from from the health magnet. Oh, part. from the health magnet. Okay. See. Yeah. So I know about the law magnet, the business magnet, the um, talented and gifted. Okay. Um. So you remember they had separate schools before. Yeah, they 96. did. And mm-hmm. then ninety six is when they brought it all together. Together, because that's the year yeah, I came. I, mean, out. I know you went to the. Yeah, you know, the I told magnet? you. Business oh magnet is where I went. Right there on what's that H? What is that mm-hmm. street? Yeah. So yeah. we, I was the first class that graduated out. Me of too. In yeah. health magnet. Yeah. First. Yeah. 96, baby. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, went down to a school called Southwestern Adventist University mm-hmm. and got a business degree. And uh, been been you know, going ever since. So uh, uh, my first part of my career was started with Coca-Cola. So I okay. got to learn a lot with Coca-Cola. Okay. And uh, one thing I did get to learn um, in the last position I was in was that all their products are all <clears throat> incorporated separately. So, if, you know, Cherry Diet Coke mm. has its own LLC. Really? Uh, you're not going to sue them off of getting sick off that brand and think you can go after the entire brand. Wow. And it blew me away that they had all their products incorporated separately. Separately. Well, separately. For liability purposes. Wow. And that's when I learned how important liability was. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So how did you get it? So what are you doing? So you say you're doing like just mostly business stuff right now, right? Yeah, I have a company called Succeed Consulting Firm, and we just basically help people, um, you know, establish the foundation. Okay. You know, a lot of people are creative. They know how to make the money. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, our race is the one that doesn't know how to protect it. Right. Right. So I, that's what I uh, put my heart and soul into. Okay. Okay. Helping you make sure you keep it. And understand how to protect it, and, and especially when it comes to the tax implication, too. Okay. Right. So it's a lot we don't know. You right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so how did you How did you just jump start it? I know you were saying something about um, a seminar. So um, 2008, I started my company called Succeed Consulting Firm. I didn't really know uh, based off the fact that I knew about liability. Mm-hmm. When I was telling you about Coca-Cola. Um, I know I just wanted to help people in small businesses. So I started off helping people start LLCs. Okay. Um, and, you know, doing that over the course of three or four years, some of these LLCs became wealthy. Right, right. <laughs> like now they're making a lot of money, right? So what do you do now? So I had to learn how to protect them. Okay. So in 2015 um, is when I started my endeavor on estate plan and trust. Uh, so for the last seven to eight years, um, that's what I do every day. Um, 
and um, you show said people estate planning trust. Estate planning, yeah. Okay. So basically, how do you plan for your assets? You know, while you're here, and once you actually depart. Okay. Yeah. So just so with the estate planning trust or whatever. So what? How, how do you? Um, how is that structured out? So basically, you know, a lot of people have heard about different components when it comes to you know businesses. I mean, you know, in one conversation, you probably heard of something called a capital holding company. Right. In another conversation, you heard of something called a 501c3 foundation. <clears throat> in another conversation, you've heard of a trust. Okay. In another conversation, you've heard of annuity. But nobody showed you how to put these things together. So my thing was is that how do they all work together? That's why Succeed is a puzzle piece. Okay. So we're showing you how all these things work together. Nobody showed us this. So we're going to show you how your S-Corp is in partnership with your capital holding company. And how your, your capital holding company is in partnership with your trust. And how your trust is the one that owns your investments. Right? So, so yeah, we'll show you how to set it up correctly. So, it's important. Yes. Um, if you're going to build generational wealth, <clears throat> you got to understand that there's two types um, of law. Um, there's common law and there's statutory law. Okay. <laughs> Now, if anybody understands what I mean, but I'll explain it. Um, statutory law is simply law that's under the state. So when you're operating under statutory law, you basically have um, all of your rights and all your assets under the state jurisdiction. Okay. That's called probate court. Right. So now they can hold that up. James Brown probate, I think, lasted for, what, 10 years? Yep. <laughs> right? And uh, a lot of people don't know that James Brown had a lot of properties. Mm-hmm. So out of that 10 years, I think they were able to actually take about half of his properties because the family wasn't able to pay the property taxes, see? Right. So they dragged this stuff out. So just to bet to see if you're going to be able to pay. And if you can't pay it, who's going to get it? Right. So probate is not the way to go. As a citizen of the United States of America, you also have the right to operate under common law. Okay. And if you look on the world map, if you go to Google and type in the four world laws before all these laws that you know exist today, you're going to see that the United States of America is in a very unique situation because we were only the three countries that started as a common law country. That means, what does that mean? That means that your laws are governed by judges. Hmm. And um, everybody knows that there's 12 people that sit in something called the Supreme Court. Okay. Every time they make a ruling, every court underneath them has to follow their ruling. That's how you know you're in a common law country. Right. So if that be the case, why are we giving the state our jurisdiction when we can only have to give the federal government our jurisdiction? See? So you're being double taxed if you have the state as your jurisdiction. Okay. Because the federal is over the state. <laughs> right? Right. So you're giving the state and the federal the jurisdiction. Wow. Instead of just giving the federal government the jurisdiction. So <clears throat> when you just give the federal government the jurisdiction... You're now operating privately. When the state is involved, that's what they call the public sector. See? So there's the private sector and there's the public sector. Right? So I just show people how to operate underneath the common law uh, provision so they can have a private contract in place. Right. What doesn't require them to have an attorney. Um, they don't need an attorney after they set up a trust. Okay. Uh, they can have a family attorney to, to advise them, but... You're not having to, this, the, the government cannot force you into a contract with a state licensed official. Mm, okay. That's what the contract, that's what the Constitution says. Um, they can't make you go hire an attorney. That's why if you get caught up in something, you can always represent yourself. Right. That's the common law provision. Right. See? Um, you, they'll give you an attorney if you need one, but you don't have to pay for one. Why? Because they cannot force you to pay a state official. Wow. Okay. You know how many people don't know this? So now if they <laughs> can't force you to pay that, then you you have the right to go into a private contract. I can go into a private contract with you right now, right? And the, and the state is out of our contract. You got it? Right. So that's what we do. We just make sure people understand that. So you have to operate through state instruments like S-Corps, LLCs, partnerships. But what you do is you didn't understand that you can also partner with private instruments. So that's your trust. Okay. So now you're sending like the trust is like your savings account on crack. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so basically that's where you're holding all your money. Because if you hold it in your personal account and something, God forbid, something happens to you, 
they're going to actually try to hold that in probate. Right. Yeah. If you own a business outright 100%, God forbid, if anything happens to you, who set the business up? The Secretary of State. Right. See? So we don't understand that either you're going to either be in partnership or have a trust to avoid the probate. That's the only way you can avoid it. Right. Okay. So a will is not even good. A will is really a ticket to probate court. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it like that. Ticket you just really probate. bought a ticket. Like you're gonna have to, about to go to the opera. You right. bought the ticket. Yeah, you're going to go right to probate. Wow. Because what you don't understand when an attorney actually draws up a, tr- a will for you, mm-hmm. who is the one putting you into probate? The attorney. The attorney. Because they know now that you have to hire them or the family has to hire them in order to protect mom's assets. Right. See? So they don't tell you that, though, when you set it up, that right. there's going to have to be an attorney involved at the, you know, at the, ins- you know, at the, at the um, end of this. Okay. So if people don't know anything about probate, you know, if you've ever been through it, God forbid, it's the worst thing you can put your family through. That's right. It is. Right? I mean, you know, someone's already, you know, you're already grieving over the family loss, and then now you have an attorney calling you up talking about, <laughs> you got to come meet with me and, you know, bring this amount of money and all that. And now, you, you know, and this is where the family breakouts happen and stuff because you're not prepared to pay money after our, anybody's death. Right. So um, I tell people at all costs, the most important thing to do, the best thing you can do for your family in this lifetime is to put them in a position where they avoid that. Right. Right. And now they can actually use the assets in the trust. Um, they can bury you with them. Okay. Because remember, if you get caught up in probate, they can't use those assets. Right. It's happened to a lot of people. People have hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, in their savings account, it now. and they can't even touch it. Right. And now they're having a GoFundMe page because there's a hundred thousand wow. dollars in the savings account, that they can't and touch. they can't touch. And it makes no sense. Right. right? So, uh, as far as a trust go, what what all can be done with a trust? So, listen. <laughs> Trust, I just tell you, the number one reason for the trust is, number one, of course, is asset protection. Um, you're doing business in a business that has an EIN number, and you're, you know, we're going to make sure you're in a state that has asset protection like Texas, okay. right? So, again, if something happens, somebody happens in, in your EIN number, they can't sue you in your personal stuff or any other EIN numbers, right? Okay. So that's why the trust is 100% protected because, again, nothing in that trust is can be sued on because you're not doing any business in the public with that trust EIN. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, again, you're avoiding the double taxation. Number three, avoiding asset, um, avoiding probate court. Um, and number four, um, you're able to use the trust. You're actually now become the lender to your family. Now, let me explain this to you. Um, you're putting the majority of your money, your savings into the trust. But now people ask me, well, how can I use the money out the trust? Well, you can use it several ways. Number one, um, the trust is there to actually build money for the beneficiaries. Okay. So however you think that you sh- can create more wealth for the beneficiaries, you, you're more wealth, you can, you can do it. Okay. So if you think that you can um, need to buy this business over here because it's generating so much money per month, that's going to add more money to the actual estate, then you can do it. Okay. Right? Um, if you think you need to create this business over here because it's going to start generating some money, then you can do it. Um, a lot of people say, well, the money that's in the trust is really actually for the beneficiary. Yes, it is. But the trust trustee can use the money to create more generational wealth for the, for the beneficiaries, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the trust can be used to pay for a property. Okay. Number one. Okay. If, you, if you're in real estate and you're not associated with trust, then you're going about it the wrong way. Um, you know, um, when you actually use a property to fund a trust, like that means that I'm going to take this property that I have and I'm going to give it to this trust so that this trust can now create income. Okay. To start building money for my beneficiaries. The revenue that is made off that property is not taxable. So can you imagine, you know, you start with one property, you fix it up, and you sell it through the trust, and there's no capital gain tax associated with that. You take the money off those proceeds and go buy two more properties and, and just keep going up and up and up and up. All of that is now considered principal because it started from principal, right? So now that would never, ever be taxed to the trust. Now the interest made off the principal is what's taxed, 
okay. not the principal itself. For example, you know, you know, if you put the property in there and it's sold for five hundred thousand, mm-hmm. then the five hundred thousand dollars is not taxable. But it's been sitting in the account for six months and it's gaining interest right. on the account. Right. The interest is taxable. Mm, okay. Not the five hundred thousand. Not the five hundred thousand. Understand? Right. So you take that money and go buy your next project or do your next project, right? Another thing the trust can do is lend money. <laughs> you the you the bank. So you the bank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now you the bank. So that means you can lend money to c- companies, <laughs> right? You can lend money to people, right? Right. Okay. Um, as long as you make it a binding legal contract, how do you do that? Make sure that at least it has a 4% interest rate, right? Okay. So can you imagine, um, you know, your daughter needs a car mm-hmm. and um, she don't have the money for it. So instead of you just giving her the money where it's taxable to her, the trust goes and pays for the car. Okay. Now, trust owns that car, not your daughter. Right. So what you have to do now is put a lease agreement in place between the trust and your daughter. Now, the question is, who determines the terms on that lease agreement? We do, right? The trustee. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say we do. Right? I'm the trustee. So just imagine this. You know, a $30,000 car. Mm-hmm. And because your daughter's in college and she's doing the right thing, she's trying everything, right. she's doing everything right, you know she's trying to get on her feet. Right. You make the terms of that payment two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm. See what I'm saying? That's crazy. And you can control those terms. Does that make sense? Right. So that what what that does it puts us in a position to always collect the interest out of our families, because now everybody in your family is going to go finance something. If the trust can be the one that actually lends the money to them, and the trust gets the four percent back every time. The trust is now creating generational wealth. You're not letting the money go to Wells Fargo and Bank of America and Chase and all these other people. Wow. Got it? Yes. So if you can let the money come into your estate, because, again, I have two kids. They're probably going to have three, four kids each. <laughs> That's probably going to have four or five kids. Each, that, that. So your yeah. estate is going to grow like, you know, uh, it's going to multiply. Right. All those people need to be insured. See, that's another reason. That's why I have a life insurance. Because I show you how to, in, in 16 days... You get a social security card after you're born. So when your grandbaby come out their home, right, I'm right there, right? Yeah. Because now day number 17, I'm calling my life insurance agent. <laughs> I'm getting an IUL. Anybody know what that is? An index universal life policy. I'm getting an annuity, 20-year annuity on them. I'm getting an endowment on them. You see? So by the time they hit 20 years old, do you know how much money I can borrow off that IUL policy for them? Do you know how much money's in that annuity for them? This is how they send their kids to Harvard. Right, right. You understand? Yeah. This is how they buying the houses for these beneficiaries, and they have to pay nothing. They're paying now a rental room rate. Right. You know? So you get money out for social, too. Like, you said 16 days, 17 days, you're going to go get social, right? Well, 17 days, you'll, 16 days, you'll have the social security card. So once you have the social security card, now you can get the life insurance policy. Okay, okay. I got what you're saying. And, said. again, anybody know about life insurance policy, your baby is going to be the cheapest premium on the planet. Right. And on top of that, there's no, you know, uh, blood work or no urine work or no, <laughs> no they don't take <laughs> nothing. Work. They take it on the fact that it's your life. Now, I want you to think about this. They have mortality charts out here. People, you know, how long people live. Let's just face the facts and be real about this. Not everybody makes it to 10 years old. Oh, no, you're right about that. So if you got a million dollar policy on a baby, God forbid something happens. The trust just won. Yeah. Do you hear me? And this is how they build generational wealth all day long. Okay. So you got to be in tune with that, you know. And the policies, the premiums are paid out the trust. The trust owns the policy, and the trust is the beneficiary of the policy. Let me explain that, too. No one person should be a beneficiary of, of a life insurance policy. Right. I agree. <laughs> Setting person up for extreme failure. Yeah. Okay? Because, first of all, too many people know that that person getting money. You know, you know anything you time you delivering a, a policy over a million dollars, it's usually the person delivering it to you. But how many people he done told on the way over Right, there? right. Facts. And then now your daughter getting hit from left and mm-hmm. right. All these people coming at her from, you know, you need this for your house or you need it. And she's trying to figure out what's going on. It's because people know she got money. Right. So we don't never let 
a person be a beneficiary of a life insurance policy? You let the trust. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So the trust owns it and is the beneficiary? Absolutely. <laughs> because now when the money comes into the policy, into the actual trust, you know, at the time of my death, there's going to be a few couple of millions. Mm-hmm. They can disperse that money how they want to. It's not to one person. So if I got nine to 10, 12 beneficiaries because I got grandkids now, that money is not taxable. Right. I can now divvy that money up to all of them. Does it make sense? Right. So if it's $3 million, <laughs> you can give everybody 100000 easy. Right. Untaxed. That's crazy. See? And this is how what we call trust fund babies live. Trust mm. fund babies. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But they go in it. So as far as the, the trust go, so we have, what is it, successors? or Yes. So... I'm glad you brought that up. So um, there's really a lot of people say there's three components to a trust. There's really a little bit more because um, what she just mentioned, the success is probably one of the most important pieces of the trust because this is the person you're saying that's going to take over the trust in case something happens to you. Okay. Now, as a good trustee, I usually have about two or three successors in, in place Okay. in my mm-hmm. lifetime. Okay. So I know, number one, who's my number one? Then if number one ain't working out, number two. Okay. Then if number two ain't working out, number three. And every successor should, or every trustee should be trained that way as well. So that, again, in their lifetime, they're going to have to replace those successors. Okay. So uh, what we put together in Succeed Consulting Firm is now some certifications. So now all people that are part of this trust are going to have a certification because you want to know a person that's your successor. You want them to know, that's make right. sure they understand everything about your estate. Right. Right? Uh, and so you're training. There's a training process you go through with them. And now you feel more comfortable about leaving your assets um, you know, when that time is right. And then, you know, at the time of your retirement, we didn't mention nothing about the bill of sale and the promissory you note. Know, right. About collecting right. money out the trust tax right. free. But anyway. We're going to leave them suspicious so right. we, can, we can be able to get them to come right on to you right. and get that information. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, that money set up for retirement. But, you know, at some point in time, you need to bring your successor on as a um, co-trustee. Okay. And let them, you know, start running things with you, you know. And treat, tr- you know, train them in your lifetime. Okay. Uh, just like anything else, you know, um, nonprofits have to have successors. Big corporations have to have successors. Right. So just like that, same thing. Okay. Right. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So let our listeners know how to get in contact with you. So um, the best way to get in contact with me to get an appointment with me is not to call me directly. <laughs> I'll tell no. you that right <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm going to give you my uh, office number and my assistant. Um, her name is... Um, uh, Ms. Clark, she would be glad to set an appointment with you guys and uh, get you a one-on-one with me. Um, that number is going to be 214-282-3386. Uh, we'll sure. put it. We'll make sure we put it on to the... Um, and it's on our website. Just go to succeedconsultingfirm.com. It's, it's really the best place to go. Okay. And you can book an appointment online there. Um, so that's uh, succeed, S-U-C-C-E-E-D. Consulting, C O N S U L T I N G, and then firm.com. And uh, you can go right there to book an appointment. And then also, if you want to call directly, um, there's a 1 800 number. Okay. Uh, so there's a 1 800 790 9510. Okay. And then the other number is 214 292 8836. Okay, perfect. So um, I would like to thank. Thank you for coming on today, Russell. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting and, um, me. That, it was, yeah, it was and an the, honor. Hey, and like I said, all my mission is to is just make sure we inform. So every Monday nights we have a Zoom call. Okay. Um, you know, free to the public. Okay. It's just free information about you know estate planning and trust. Um, it's very informative. So if you want to get on, I'll, I'll leave the link with uh, with you. Okay. And you can send it out to anybody that wants to uh, join. Perfect. Thank okay. you. And I want to thank all our listeners for tuning in. Live High Entertainment, and we out. Peace. (laughs) Peace.